Hello and good morning guys and welcome back to Lakeland. This episode, or this part, we're gonna strive to reach the big town milestone. Uh, we're currently at Grand Village. Because of how this works with XP instead of just population, we kind of need to be think about that a little bit more. Like, for example, like you get XP for placing buildings and roads and you get XP gradually over time from like citizen happiness and citizen growth as well. So. If we just let the game run, uh, we like for a very long time though, but we might actually reach the milestone without actually progressing anything. So the plans for today are trains. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna we're gonna do trains. We're gonna add a train line that goes through here. We're gonna add a large train station. We are going to delete most of this to adjust the train a little bit. Like we're gonna rebuild it, but on a slope. So I'll show you how that kind of works. The train line is going to continue over on this side and, and terminate until we figure out what to do with it here. But I think I'm just going to end it in a tunnel here. I'm going to put a cargo train station here, which we desperately need. And I think we're going to put a cargo uh, or a train depot because we need a train depot around here near, near the highway as well. So we'll need to unlock a few tiles for it. The next thing I would want to do today is I would want to expand the road layout massively, like just expand the city. We'll probably get more uh, map tiles when we unlock the next milestone, but I'm thinking around this area here. We also have the progression stuff. We can unlock stuff now. So we have four points, uh, development points, that's what it's called. And we definitely need to unlock the trains. Parks and recreation. I really want the sports parks. We're gonna have to wait with roundabouts a little bit and parking areas. We have a wastewater treatment plant unlocked already. That's great because I was planning to unlock that as well. I forgot I did that last episode. Yes, okay, great. Uh, let's get into it, I suppose. This episode will have a lot of cuts, by the way. Just a warning. I've never done so many cuts uh, as I'm about to do in this video. And the first thing we're starting with doing is the trains. And I remembered you have to have a train depot for spawning trains now. And actually we need it before we can even place the station. So that's why we went and placed it down in the empty field for now. This area here will be the sort of ma main train station area. And it will be up elevated above street level. So uh, this whole <laughs> block is getting demolished so that we can slope the terrain and uh, make it integrated with the surroundings better. It turned out pretty good. I don't think this is a very realistic way to, to build stuff <laughs> with this amount of demolishing, but it, it is the best uh, way to do it in City Skylines anyway, so it's, it's not always about real life, I suppose. I do terraforming right now, but there's actually some huge developments. Since I recorded this, uh, contour lines have been added to the game. So now there is contour lines and also contour lines for um, when you're drawing out roads. So that's a huge win. <laughs> I think that's going to make the game so much better, honestly. Um, huge, huge win. Now you can see me like reconnecting the roads in this district, like just fixing the grid. Not actually fixing the grid. The grid is a little bit broken, but I don't mind that too much, to be honest. I'm going to show some tricks to fix the zoning near intersections so that it sort of spawns, or the zoning grid primarily spawns on one side of the road, so we get like at least a little bit of a little bit of more efficient and a little bit more aste aesthetically pleasing uh, zoning, I suppose. I'm also going to make sure to include the new game music from City Skylines 2 in this video. I've been defaulting to using the Radio Mars soundtrack in the first video, which is like my favorite soundtrack. I always use it in most of my videos, but um, I think we should showcase uh, the new music as well because it's pretty good. Now I am doing the zoning the zoning back of this area zoning back better maybe not better i don't know and here i'm showing that zone adjustment trick so basically i'm using the very thin pedestrian path and then deleting it and that updates the zoning grid and sometimes you can really have good uh, sort of results with it so i recommend trying that whenever you get the chance and uh, we are very quickly going forward with actually making train tracks. Finally, let's go. The train tracks in City Skylines 2 
look much better than in City Skylines 1. I think goes uh, without without saying. That's a kind of no shit statement, I suppose. They also um, connect much better than City Skylines 1. Meaning that the nodes are much more realistic and you don't need to use sort of uh, weird tricks or weird mods or, and even in some cases like dedicated assets to make them look even remotely realistic. So, so that's very nice. There are still some aspects of them that isn't perfect and uh, there's a few tricks already I'm happy to say to, to fix these, these issues as well and, and we'll, we'll get to one of them relatively shortly actually. Um, but here you can see the connection has been made to the, uh, the train depot. And I also want to connect this train uh, system to the outside connection. The outside connections. We have two outside connections here. Basically the train track does a small swerve into the buildable area or into the, the tiles we own and then back out again. I want to create a sort of triangle of train tracks here instead. and. And make it look like this is a kind of node or a kind of large, um, I guess, interchange almost without being a, really an interchange. Sometimes I've noticed you have to do the terraforming before actually placing the tracks. So I would have maybe preferred to not having to do that. I feel like mods with City Skylines 1 kind of kind of fixes this. But um, the terraforming tools are, 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 are okay. I think they're fine. And... Especially with the addition of contour lines, they're going to be better. A lot better, <laughs> to be honest. The slope tool is one of those tools I learned very late how to use for City Skylines 1. It makes a reappearance and it is extremely useful. Um, I feel like a lot of the time it just works also. It just works ba better uh, when I kind of feel like this, this kind of stuff would have required more work in City Skylines 1 to get it to look decent. But I feel like it most of the time just works on the first try in, in, in City Skylines 2, so I can't I can't really quantify what causes that feeling, but <laughs> yeah. Here I'm using a one-way, uh, no, a one single track, two-way uh, rail to connect these spurs of the, the train depot. I don't know if you need to connect them, but if for aesthetics I, I definitely think I should, and um, also, that's actually an, a cool, neat addition. There are single track or single track two way train tracks now in the game. So, and I assume that means they are functional as well. <laughs> the single track train AI mod was a mod for City Skylines 1, and I'm not sure how well it worked, to be honest. Like, it probably worked a little bit, but it's one of those small additions that I think uh, is very nice to have in the game. A lot of the times, train tracks aren't dual track, and. Uh, that's it. Here I am connecting the uh, the cargo station, and the cargo station is actually connected with a single track. That asset uses that functionality. I mean, it has to work, right? <laughs> I assume it. I assume it works. I mean, I assume that means you can do like functional train waiting spot waiting spots. I don't know what it's called. Bypassing tracks, I suppose. Yeah, you do like a double track for a small part and then have a, a train line that's primarily a single track. I think that's going to be very fun, especially for creating like rural, more remote, like lesser built up areas. And here you can see something that's actually really interesting about how snapping works in City Skylines 2. It snaps to lanes instead of nodes. This is something we use heavily for train tracks and highways alike. So, so uh, this is this is really cool. And now I'm planning out the connection to the other edge of, edge of the map or the other side. This is not going to be a functional connection. This is going to go out and into a tunnel entrance, so it looks like it goes somewhere. It's a very, it's a very deliberative, deliberative, deliberate uh, choice because I don't necessarily like having the networks just end in the middle of nowhere, which is, which is my one of my bigger gripes, I guess, with how the map edge connections work in City Skylines 2, that they just end at the map edge. I think it's fine. There is a workaround for that that is actually really neat. You can create outside connections in tunnels, so you could actually just 
um, if, assuming this was the map edge, you could just make the the entrance or the, the exit to the city in, in a tunnel and hide it in that way. I think like that's probably going to influence some of the first maps I make, to be honest, because then I can have a outside connection inside of a tunnel directly off the map, and I think that's that's going to be that's going to be a fun thing. Like maybe like it's a valley surrounded by high mountains. I think that's a good good idea for a map. Yeah. So eventually, maybe we unlock these tiles and uh, we get further out this way, and then we can connect it to the outside. But currently, it's not connected. Um, here, I had to remove the roundabout on this interchange, and I decided, you know what? Let's let's show off some other things these Skylands 2 can do, like like weird junctions and node stuff. So I play around with it a little bit, and and come up with a a different solution for for how how it's how it's gonna look, I suppose. It doesn't include the roundabout, sadly, because um, that would require a lot more moving of stuff, I think. But I'm I'm really happy with how this looks, and you can see I'm like upgrading the road, very small steps to the side by disabling the snapping. You can upgrade the roads and switch them back and forth very easily, so that's very nice. Connecting the extra train tracks to the train station. And there is currently only one train station in the game. It's the, it's a rather big. I would have wished maybe more train stations would be in the game, like smaller ones. But this is what we get for now, and uh, I, I can live with that. But um, I'm I'm hoping for uh, eventually, like to get smaller and just more versatility with the train train stations. I guess that goes for metro stations and stuff like that as well, that I haven't really looked at yet. So I was thinking maybe the next episode, the next part, we do a metro system. This episode here is kind of like, or the build itself for this episode is kind of massive. There's so much, so much that gets built. And here, oh, can't miss this. Uh, we are doing the train lines. We're setting up the train lines. There's train lines for both passenger and cargo now. So. Uh, that's a new thing. This is actually kind of similar how how I like to do rail uh, lines in City Skylines One, but it does it's that's a kind of a modded way to do it. And here I'm showing a trick that is very useful to improve the visuals of these switches. I'm connecting it with a small path and then just upgrading it to the side. And that stretches out the switches, and that's perfectly functional. It makes everything look better, so it's a nice little trick. And, oh, the pace is so quick, oh my goodness. And now uh, we're placing some parks. I'm sorry, guys. It's going to be a little bit like this from now. Uh, we're placing some parks inside of the central park to sort of get it uh, working as a park. That's a big reason why those pedestrian roads uh, are great as well, because I can place the parks on directly on the roads. I would have been happy to be able to place parks on paths also, kind of like how park life works, but I think for now this is fine. I like to do detailing, like lightweight detailing when it comes to parks by just placing paths. I think paths and trees are really everything you need to, to detail a, a, a sort of park. It would be nice with all the other props, of course, and like stuff like that, but trees and, and paths just go such a long way. And especially the smaller paths in City Skylines 2 compared to City Skylines 1 make this a lot more flexible. But of course, more versatility, more props, all of that stuff I want it. But um, uh, this finished build will have quite a few park paths like along the waterfront, but uh, that's not included in the video. I had to cut out so much of this build guys i'm i'm oh, i'm sorry for it i'll talk about it in a bit i think now we're moving on to the water treatment plant which i remembered i unlocked in the last episode because i really don't like how that polluted water looks and i kind of fear that if we don't sort of get a permanent water treatment solution that what that um, discoloration in the water will persist for a long time and it will ruin screenshots and all that stuff so 
I kind of panic and uh, decide we need a water treatment plant right now. It doesn't make sense for the economics of the city and stuff like that, but we need it for the visuals. The economics are fine, but we can afford it, but it's it's probably not what you you should prioritize to invest in if you have if you're struggling with money. This city is ex like it turns out being extremely profitable. I set all the budgets back and uh, the taxes to the default value, I believe, and I think I run a profit in the end at like 200,000 per hour. I, I still don't really understand how how the profits and the economics in the game work, but it seems good, I think. One thing that this build does not include is a lot of like sort of services. There's like, there's distinct lack of services. I feel like the services would be a great topic for the last episode. So uh, that's probably something we are going to do then. Let's do a quick recap now. Like we've disconnected this, it will be reconnected later, but we have other entrances to the city so far, so it's, it's fine. We did unlock the next milestone, Tiny Town. So that's great. We have a rail system up and running. I don't know if anybody's using it. Passengers waiting too. Okay, not all that much, but it's it's more than it's more than uh, nothing at least. So that's good. We also got the sewage treatment plant in. It's massively over over engineered for what we need right now, but it's good because that means we can delete this and we can start fixing the or we can start not seeing the red uh, pollution water. This will no longer be a feature. It will start disappearing from now on, so that's nice. Won't ruin our screenshots any further. Now I think it's time for just the massive expansion of the city. This area here is going to be industrial, or more industrial in nature. We still have a wind flowing this way, and this side is going to be more residential, uh, simply because of that, I suppose. And... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we could add another cargo train station, like, roughly here on the train line. That could be a good way to get, um, serve this area as an industrial area as well. But the main project right now, at least, is to develop this area up. Uh, with roads and uh, zoning, basically. We will also unlock the roundabouts, the larger size roundabouts, finally, and might as well do the parking lots. I think we are going to start working towards uh, higher education. That makes a lot of sense. Let's just use the last point on welfare office. We have displaced a lot of people uh, while uh, <laughs> deleting the town and, and rebuilding it again. It feels pretty appropriate to add a welfare office at some point, so a bit. This needs to be offset because I want to do a roundabout here. A larger roundabout, that is. There we go. So now we're transitioning into the part where I go kind of crazy and just keep building without any regard. I build a lot. I build a lot of stuff I won't show, unfortunately. I build a lot of suburbs. I try to summarize it a little bit. I build a, like a complete university town, large industrial areas, uh, large farmlands. I decorate basically all of the waterfront with park paths this is all shown in the cinematics but it would not be possible to show in the video a uh, kind of a disclaimer on uh, the the things you see as well is that i do finish building everything uh, for the big town milestone which was the agreed upon milestone it's just that just when i was about to record the cinematics for this winter hit winter is coming and everything turned into snow and apparently this map has snow proper snow for seven months or something like that between o october and may early may october to early may so i didn't want to record cinematics for that so i let the game run for a long time through the winter to record the cinematics so the cinematics actually show like i think it's two milestones past big town uh, which, that's kind of how the, the progression system works. It, the progression system doesn't just care about you upgrade, like uh, unlocking stuff or like getting a population. It 
passively adds XP from uh, population growth and citizen happiness. So that's that's just like a small disclaimer I want to get in here. I'm sorry. What you're seeing in the end cinematics, which is look, which is gonna look amazing, by the way, is not technically a big town, but I did stop building while I was in the big town. So uh, enough of my disclaimer. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll be sure to put up a, a picture of how it looks in, in winter, even though I didn't record anything. Um, I do show it a little bit. It's kind of cool, It's but it's not my... It's not what I prefer to show, I guess. I, I, I would have probably picked another map if I knew this map had so much winter on it, so... Anyway, what I'm doing now is, like, very, very hurriedly and summarily, I'm showing off some of the first of these additional suburbs. I'm actually placing down a college as well, so it's the first higher education building and also I believe the first parking lots we're using in this map. I would love to add more parking lots, I probably should just go back and add more parking lots all across the map uh, now that they are unlocked, but I feel like because of the amount of growth we do in this episode, we kind of have the opportunity to go back and just look at stuff and like fix, I guess detail in a way, like but like, we don't have to focus so much about growth for the last episode, so I'm, I'm kind of... That feels pretty good. I'm less stressed about that. And maybe I can go into more of the details about how stuff works. If I know more by, by then, that is. Uh, that's not... That's say, assuming a lot. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty daft when it comes to knowing how the game works. I, I, I very much take pride in knowing how the game looks and, and the aesthetics, but how, how the stuff works, I'm not... Honestly, I'm probably not the best source for that kind of information a lot of the time. <laughs> I sometimes say stuff like, I know it, but take it with a grain of salt. So, when it comes to the, the future plans for this build, as I said, maybe not so much expansion, but like, sort of dedicated builds. Like, one build I would love to do is like, maybe an airport, maybe a actual port, like a seaport. We could unlock to the map edge and... Uh, get the ship path in here that would be really cool i think like these are all ideas metro system and just services in general like adding a proper hospital and stuff like that would be great as well so there's plenty of ideas going around i feel this episode also marks a milestone in that it's the first time i'm ever trying the built-in cinematic camera mod cinematic camera mode i suppose it's called uh, for city skylines 2 i never had the time or really interest in trying to learn it for the first episode but I feel like it's about time, and it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think about the cinematics in the end, I suppose. So, this is me showing that we don't need keys in City Skylines 2 because every road is kind of a key. I thought this was going to be an easy build, though. It kind of is very finicky still. Unfortunately, this would be a lot easier with some kind of anarchy mod uh, that lets you get rid of the in-water notification, but... It's technically possible, it's just very tricky to create these keys, and uh, you can sort of see me struggling with it for a bit. The plan was to make this like downtown waterfront area based around these keys, but I, it, I, in the end I think I only use one segment of key and call that, like that's the waterfront, <laughs> and uh, just build the downtown around it. Took the easy way out this time, guys. So. This area here is actually going to be the sort of center of the city. I had this planned for the longest time. I had an idea, the, the idea that this would be where the sort of skyscrapers sit or where the tallest buildings are. I'm not sure about we're gonna do like extreme skyscrapers, but but it, it just feels like a very cool place to be at, I guess. <laughs> we have all these small little extra islands that I imagine are like basically mostly parks. And uh, there's also like all the waterfront parks that sort of converge to this area as well. I I really like how this turns out, but unfortunately I don't show that much of it. I show like a little bit of the road layout here in the beginning. But um, there's a lot of zoning tricks that goes into it as well. I did manage to find... There is a, there's a pretty cool trick actually. Uh, I didn't find this, but uh, I was told that you can actually move these uh, default buildings. You can, you can relocate them like you would with any other building. So that's really nice. They don't get deleted and destroyed forever if you build over them. So 
We just moved that tiny little mill and started the zoning here. The zoning changes a bit. The main zoning, I think, eventually is the mid-rise North American, rather than the, the mixed use. Another trick I utilize a lot with these areas is that the row houses just fit in everywhere. So every sort of weird shaped lot that you don't know what to put, just put a row house. And now for the final build of the video, the final build that showcased, I want to be I want I want to be that guy. I want to build a DDI in City Skylines 2. I want to try it. I want to test how it works. And this is me doing it. So you if you didn't know it by now, you know it. There is going to be a DDI in this city. Uh, DDIs work fine, I think, as far as I can tell. There's, it's just way too early to know what is the most efficient traffic solution in this game. But uh, it seems to work fine. It's a pretty high traffic junction and uh, there's no big backups. I do sometimes see drivers acting a little bit weird and doing very sudden lane changes, but I think it's probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to revisit this. If you don't know what a DDI is for any for some reason, um, it's not that obvious to be honest. Like it's a pretty uh, weird thing. It's called a diverging diamond interchange. It's a it's part meme and part interchange, if you ask me to be honest. But for some reason, they fascinate me a lot, and I just can't stop thinking about them. So I had to build one in City Skylines too, just to see how it how it is. The idea is that the the sort of traffic that goes across the intersection or over this bridge actually switches over to the other side of the road, or the, the, the other direction of travel, uh, in order to have a quicker access to uh, the ramps, I guess. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it. I'll probably have to reference the Wikipedia article on how these work, but the point is that you only have two points of sort of oncoming head-to-head -head collisions and that's that those are usually regulated by a traffic light so it's supposed to be modern good traffic solution i i don't know i think like it's over engineering probably most of the time but they as i said they fascinate me and i i can't i can't uh, resist the urge to uh, to build one so this is what you're seeing right now this location was a little bit tricky because of the bridge, the railway and the road bridge relatively nearby. So I had to really uh, do some preparatory terraforming to get the ramps to work. I should also mention about the DDI that it's a pretty American thing. There's not a lot of them outside of North America that I know of anyway. But um, maybe that sort of uh, is what makes them exotic and interesting for me. Maybe, maybe I have a... A sort of unhealthy fascination with with an interchange type maybe maybe i should see a doctor about this or a therapist i don't know anyway guys we're approaching the end of this video i appreciate you so much for taking the time to watch this and if you liked this please consider liking and subscribing um, and follow along for the next and the last part of this three-part series i don't know the date yet for that but it's probably gonna be in a few weeks, probably not too far into the future. I'm still really excited for the cinematics uh, to show you guys what I came up with. So don't leave just yet, or about only a minute long, so that's not a big extra investment. Thank you guys so much again, and I will see you next time. Bye.